Hello there, my name is Fred. Throughout this video, we'll be taking a candid look into the lives of CRPS patients. Um, CRPS, meaning Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, which was also known as RSD before around 1994, which is Reflex Sympathetic Dystrophy. Um, that still gets used today though, quite a bit. Uh, this is quite a rare and chronic pain disorder, but it doesn't just end with pain, it's more like it begins with pain. Uh, there are generally two types of classifications for CRPS, CRPS1 and CRPS2. Uh, CRPS2 is caused by a direct injury to the nerves, um, as in a crush injury, surgery, uh, burns, whereas CRPS1 there is no direct injury to the nerves themselves. Um, causes would be twisted ankles, stubbed toes. Um, so I'll just give you a quick rundown of my personal understanding of CRPS. Now in the uh, affected area there's a loss of 25 to 35% of your nerve fibre endings. Now these control uh, pain, swelling, sweating, hair growth, uh, discoloration and um, so on. Now the signal being sent from the affected area to your brain is then incomplete and your brain's fail-safe mode is to give pain. Um, the difference with CRPS is the pain that can be received uh, can go above and beyond the initial injury. Um, in fact, according to the McGill Pain Index, it can go above and beyond um, the intensity of uh, cancer, childbirth and even amputation. So together in this video, um, you know, we aim to bring you uh, some understanding um, of CRPS, especially to the, the newly diagnosed uh, people. Um, now we'd like to go through a lot of the little symptoms um, and the big symptoms that we get, uh, which isn't just pain, because it, there's just much more to it than, than pain. Um, I'll be talking to uh, somebody who's gone into remission. I'll be talking to longer term patients, um, younger person with CRPS, and uh, even a parent caregiver of a child with CRPS to get their perspective too. So uh, I really hope the information we provide in this video is, is useful to many of you. But you know, please remember this is the uh, opinions of the individuals being interviewed, those who have CRPS or have lived with CRPS. Um, this is not professional information, though I aim it to be as correct as possible. This is just a patient's perspective. Thank you very much for joining us, Zara. Um, Thank you. Welcome. Hmm. Um, can you please tell us how much, uh, well, uh, what started your CRPS? What was your initial injury? So my inciting incident, the thing that sort of set it all off was a very common plant and twist injury with my knee. So I had a knee mm -hmm. sprain. It, uh, it took out my medial collateral ligament. It, it wasn't fully torn, but it was it was a pretty decent sprain and that's uh, that's what brought it all on. So. Yeah. Did you have surgery for that? No, I didn't. Luckily, no. uh, I never never had anything that invasive for it. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, what are the symptoms that you're receiving from this? So, the symptoms that I deal with on a daily basis are pain. Uh, I don't have sort of the characteristic burning pain that a lot of people talk about as my main symptom. For me, mm -hmm. my main my main uh, type of pain is sort of a constricting pain. I like mm -hmm. to liken it to, you know, a boa constrictor or something like that, just this yeah. immense pressure around my leg. So at this point, the CRPS affects my entire left leg as well as a good portion of my back and okay, that was so actually it has spread already yeah, it definitely yeah. has 
And so the other symptoms I experience are uh, I have a, I have a brain fog. My sleep yeah. is very messed up. A lot of times I can't sleep from pain, so I end up uh, taking what I like to call these uh, coma naps, where I just pass out whenever yeah. whenever my body lets me. You know. Yep. Yeah, and I'm very vibration sensitive, and you know, there's loads and loads of other ones, but for me, it's a lot of constriction and then vibration sensitivity, and I've lost a lot of strength as well. So I'm bed bound yeah. for most of the day, but I'm I'm working on it. I'm made gains. Chronic fatigue yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you don't have any discoloration and and bruising. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, Sorry. I do have that as well. There's a, there's a bit of mottling of my skin. Uh, for me, I, I don't have the, you know, the extreme swelling either that some people present. Um, I do have increased sweating in that limb, particularly the foot. Uh, my, my circulation isn't as good. My, my foot is always freezing, just Mm -hmm. very, very cold. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's it for as far as visible symptoms yeah. go. And I, yes, I yeah. use the cane to walk most of the time, but yeah. if it's a really long distance or uh, an event that I really have to go to, um, mm-hmm. like a wedding, then I'll use a wheelchair. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, what kind of uh, treatments have you tried? Have you, um, you on medication and stuff? Have you tried physio and you know mirror boxes or anything like that? Yeah, so I've done I've done a lot of research on my own. I was getting my degree in cellular molecular biology before this, uh, before mm-hmm. you know this new life of mine sort of put a halt to that. So yeah, I I really have done a lot of research on this, and I've. I brought myself up to the point where, you know, I'm using a cane instead of crutches all the time. I, I was barely able to put my foot down, you know, just over a year ago, and I got myself to the point where I wouldn't have needed, you know, I don't need a wheelchair permanently, and I did that all on my own through research. So I've done various types of physiotherapy that includes the graded motor imagery that's famous by... Uh, the NOI Institute where you are in Australia and then there are um, you know I've done the you know mirror box as well as a part of that I've done Mm -hmm. other types of physiotherapy strengthening exercises and I have a recumbent bicycle as well in my home okay so and you finding these are all helping well, you know, they're helping me to make gains. I, I don't expect it to go really quickly or anything. I'm I'm really trying to find a, a procedure to be coupled with the, you know, with the physical therapy so that I yeah. can, you know, really start to make more gains. So mm-hmm. the therapies that I've tried, I had a nerve block and that failed. That's what caused the spread to my back. Yeah. And... Okay. You know, other than that, I've tried various medications. I did try some infusions. Those were lidocaine for the first time and then lidocaine and ketamine the second time. But, yeah. you know, they didn't do much for pain. They may have helped with sensitivity, though. Yeah, okay. That that mm-hmm. that does help. Sensitivity can be quite full on, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm very lucky because I was diagnosed about six months after my original incident and that's That's because I just I just pushed my butt off to you know educate myself try to figure out what was going on try to figure out what my options were try to see as many specialists as I could and Mm -hmm. you know it ended up being a, a doctor for hire service that diagnosed me and Okay. I was diagnosed remotely as well, which is quite amazing, I think. Wow. So you've you, you seen a few specialists trying to find yeah. the answers to what's going on. Did you, have, yeah. did you have an idea that it was CRPS and you were trying to convince the doctors? Or you had I'd no never, idea at that stage? 
no, when you were I'd diagnosed is when you learnt used. about it. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm. Yeah. That's that's quite common for most. I mean, not many people know about it um, beforehand. Um, we all learn about it, and then we teach the doctors <laughs> generally. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So, you know, I just uh, I I do my best to, you know, I. I try my butt off every single day, and mm -hmm. on the days when that isn't enough, you know, I just uh, I just survive, right? And I'm very mm -hmm. lucky because I have very strong support system that has really helped me. If I didn't have the support system that I do, you know, uh, it, who know who knows where I would be? You know, a young person yeah. who hadn't settled in any type of professional career yet was just finishing university, you know. Yeah. This type of chronic pain could put somebody on the streets very easily, right? So yes. I'm lucky I'm not in that position. Yeah, yeah. You, you definitely you need um, family and friends around you um, who believe in you and and, yeah. and um, you know don't uh, mock you or um, um, no. you know it, it's actually you know it's just so common to hear of family members just not believing, you know somebody that, that they're in that kind of pain and that kind of sensitivity it, you know it's got to be really hard for sure yeah you definitely need that support structure around you so that that's been your um your your, your base for getting through this is is family and friends then yeah absolutely yeah and you know my my mom stood by me the whole time you know throughout mm -hmm. all the doctor's visits when i kept telling her you know, something isn't right, something isn't right, yeah. they're missing something, you know, because I had that overwhelming feeling. I understood that my body was trying to tell me that something was wrong, something yeah. was, you know, broken, as it yeah. were, but I didn't realize that it wasn't my limbs so much as, you know, my brain and my nervous system. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's kind of a, a, a rewiring of the brain. Yeah, and... You know, I've I've had close friends who have been through traumatic brain injuries and mm -hmm. things like that, and I I'm just amazed at you know some of some of the crossover almost. Though those are by no means the same issue or anything, but yeah, you know, I I I'm sort of amazed at some of the similar symptoms and the ways that uh, that you have to use rehab to you know, rewire everything. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So do you have any, um, uh, you know, any uh, hints or tips or anything for new people who have just been diagnosed? Um, yeah. I think, uh, I think you really have to stay positive and on the days where you can't stay positive, then let yourself have that break because you know, if you if you don't have that break every once in a while, then you're probably just putting on a face, right? And mm -hmm. you want to be honest with yourself and honest with those around you. And you know, it's it's going to be your your advocacy for yourself and your you know your drive to move forward that's going to help you in the physiotherapy aspect. And as mm -hmm. long as you get that coupled with the procedure slash pain relieving aspect, then you know hopefully you can move forward. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a lifestyle change for sure. Yeah. You know, and you you have to you have to go with it. You can't sort of you know hold back. You have to no. make uh, conscious and intentional decisions to change parts of your life in order to suit this disorder. Um, yeah. And yeah, rest and, and time to yourself is definitely high up there. You, uh, unfortunately, you have to be selfish. You have to, you know, so look, I just can't talk to anybody in the next couple of hours. I need to go on a nap. I, I, you know, my brain can't take any more. <laughs> it's full. <Yep. laughs> Leave <Yep>. it alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a lot Absolutely. more than just pain, you know. It, it, you know, when, when, you, when I was first diagnosed, I was told it was just going to be pain. Um, and that's all it would be. And so I just thought all these other symptoms were just me. It was just me being stupid, overreacting my body, overreacting, me yep. not eating right. And then, you know, you go to research it more and you're like, oh, everyone's like this. Yeah. It's like, wow, yeah. 
Yeah, that's how I felt for a while. I, I was wondering if there was something wrong with me or, you know, if I would have pushed harder earlier, could I have been mm -hmm. better? You know, ma many different questions like that. But, you know, it, it's it's not your fault. Nobody, nobody no. signed up. Like, may I please have a rare <laughs> and incurable neurological disease? Nobody yes. signed mm -hmm. up. So, yeah. you know, uh, do do what you can, and hopefully, you know, you can gather support. And if you yeah. can't get it in person, luckily, the online community can be really great. So yes, it can yeah. for sure, for sure. Okay, well, thank you very much for talking to us and um, letting us yeah. into your life. It's really appreciated, and I'm sure the people out there have uh, learned quite a bit from what you've had to say. Mm hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, by the way, some of the items behind me are my everyday functional items, including my topical, uh, my topical scarf that I wrap around my mm -hmm. leg, and uh, one of my crutches as well. So, yeah. you know, have to keep the functional stuff close. <laughs> you, you you tend to keep it all within reach, don't you? You you you, mm -hmm. you make a little sort of nest around you <laughs> of objects. Yep. Um, <laughs> Just to limit yourself getting up yeah. and using that little extra energy. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so thank you very much, Fred. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you. All right, see you later then. Okay, thank you very much for joining me, Colleen. How are you? Good, thank you. Cool. So you have CRPS, um, it's in your left hand. Yes, right. my left thumb. How did you How did you get that? What caused the injury? Uh, I was playing softball and a big fat girl ran into me and ruptured the ligament in my thumb. Ouch. Yeah, so... Did you go get treatment straight away? Yeah, I went, the to the, I went to the GP the next day. I was in too much pain, so my friend drove me. Um, and the... Doctor sent me straight for an x-ray and I nearly passed out in the x-ray room which is really unusual for me because I'm normally quite yeah. a strong sort of person um, yeah. and the x-ray didn't show anything so he thought it must just be dislocated so okay. he strapped it and I went back to work the next day and I'm a registered nurse at the time I was working in research at the local hospital and okay. um, got to work and I was just in so much pain and I thought maybe I just need to restrap the thumb. So I went over the road to a physio that I know and he looked at me and said, no, you need to see an occupational therapist. And I've worked in hospitals for years. I had no idea what I, occupational therapists did. So yeah. I went back to the hospital to the OT department and um, got one of the doctors that I work with to write me a referral to them. And it was just lucky that the next day they rang me and they said, we've had someone not turn up and since you're here in the building, oh. can you come and we'll see you? So it yeah. was really lucky. I got in there. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they looked at me and they said, this isn't dislocated. There's something really weird going on here. So they made okay. me a little splint thing to put on my thumb and said, yep. um, you need to go back to your GP because there's something not quite right. Yep. So... I went back to the GP, so this is maybe on the Thursday, I did on the Sunday, and um, said to him that I'd seen the OTs and I was just in so much pain and they'd made this splint and it felt a little bit better but I couldn't sleep and I was getting really teary talking to him and I just thought, oh my God, like I'm just turning nuts already. So he mm. sent me for an MRI and on the MRI request form he wrote query CRPS. Yes, I said to the doctor, what does CRPS mean? And he said, oh, don't worry about that. That's just something for the radiologist. It's something that you, you might have. So, of course, I went straight home and looked it up and just went, oh, my God, I don't want that. Anyway, yeah. the MRI results showed that I had a ruptured ligament, so they sent me to an orthopaedic surgeon. And um, when I got down there, I said to him, look, the GP said something about CRPS. What do you think? And he said, well... You've most definitely got it. Look at the way you're holding your hand. And I was disowning, yeah. and even then I had to put it out of sight. Yep. And he said, that's yep. just a classic sign for a start. You're not even acknowledging your limb. Yeah. 
detach from it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I had to keep it like that because that's how it stopped hurting, if that makes yes. sense. Yep. So then I had the surgery and the next day or the day after I had to go back to see them, to the OTs, um, to take yep. the, the dressing off and um, they looked at me and they just went, yep, yeah, Pauline, you've most, most, most definitely got this. You're just in so much pain and you can see the colour change starting already and then... Wow. Things just got progressively worse and I had to go back to Brisbane to the specialist and I saw his OT and she said to me, oh yeah, Colleen, it's shit, it's just shit. I said, well, what do I do with that? Like, how do I live with this thing? And she said, oh, you don't think about it, don't talk about it, don't read about it, just don't acknowledge it because it's self-fulfilling. And I'm a nurse working in research. I went straight back to work and went to the hospital yeah. library and said, find me every single thing you can. Yeah, so, yeah. I was getting uh, really thick, black, ugly hairs on my hand, yep. and it would be really, really hot, and then at other times it would be really, really cold. And yeah. I'd be given this book on neuroplasticity called The Brain That Changes Itself, and I was mm -hmm. so worried about setting up an abnormal pathway between my brain and my hand to continue this pain. Yep that I did everything I could to not let those pathways set up. So if my hand was yeah. hot, I'd fill a cup with hot water and touch the outside of it to say yeah, my yeah. hand's hot because it's touching something hot. The, the, there's a reason it's hot. Yeah. yeah, and if it was cold, I'd do the opposite. I'd put ice in yeah. it and, and hold that to try and send a message of that's why. Um, but it was getting really swollen and I used to be able to hold my hands like this and talk about it and mm -hmm. this hand would look like a salami. So it used to be yeah. a really good party. It was always a different sort of colour but the more I spoke <laughs> about it, the more spotted it had become. It was yes. really yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I was having panic attacks. I didn't recognise them as panic attacks. I thought I was going nuts. Mm -hmm. Like I cried at Walkers once because the groceries were really dear. Um, I couldn't drive because I found out that if you've got a splint on your arm, you're not insured. Um, yes. I'm a single yeah. mum and at the time my kids were 8, 10 and 12 and yeah. we couldn't do any washing. So my 12 year old had broken his foot the day before I hurt my thumb, so he was on crutches. Oh. So. Yeah. The 10-year-old would carry the washing basket to the dryer and we'd all chuck everything into the dryer because the only one that could reach yeah. the clothesline couldn't um, stand up to do it. So it was just the most ridiculous, terrible time. I couldn't shop. I couldn't cook food. Like, I couldn't cut veggies. Yeah. I couldn't comb my hair. I couldn't put my own bra on. And my three boys were doing it for me, going, this is the most disgusting thing we've ever had to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, well, Mum was sick at the time, and my partner works on oil rigs, and he was in Africa at the time, so I'd be Skyping him at night in tears, going, yeah. what am I going to do? And he didn't live with me at the time, so he came back from work and normally would have the care of his son when he was at home, so he's leaving his yep. son with his mum and coming to my my place and looking after me and driving me places. And then he'd yeah. go with me to work and I'd be stuck on my own and then mum was better and she came. But yep. she read something that said um, pain is maintained in your brain and so she decided that this was all in my brain. So yeah. then I said to her, it's a nervous thing. The sympathetic nervous system's taken yeah. over and sending these messages and she said, oh, it's nerves, you've got nerves, okay. So <laughs> it took her years before I could finally find an article that she could understand that says, "Yes, the daughter is yeah. not and this is what happens. Yeah, yeah so um, one of the nurses at the hospital works in the acute pain service and she told me about the persistent pain service. So I got a referral to them and um, it was just lucky because I was working there. This guy finished theatre one day really quite early and just rang me and said, I've got this referral sitting on my desk. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like, 
I'm in the office below you, I'll come up and see you. So he came up to see me and just expecting to have a quick look and write me out a script, 45 minutes later I'm in his office crying my eyes out and he's going, yes you've definitely got that, here's a script for amitriptyline, here's a script for um, tramadol, here's a script for something else and here's a card for a clinical psychologist, you need to go and see her. Yeah, yeah. And Thank God, because I would have been a, I would have been locked up. I reckon I was a complete and utter nutcase at that yep. time. So stressed. Um, yeah. It's the, the emotional side of it that was the most difficult to um, mm. come to terms with. I think because I've always been quite a strong person, and here I was mm. crying at the shops because it came to too much, and then mm-hmm. like I had so much sick leave, I'd run out of sick leave, and so I had to work. Yeah. And I couldn't afford to not work, and I couldn't afford to go to get massages or go to a private pain specialist or a private anything. Yeah. I had to do it all through the public system. And like yes, they were good, yeah. don't get me wrong, I've been really lucky with people I've seen. But yeah. to go to an outpatient's appointment, you sit there for three hours. Yeah. And yeah, the, it's terrible. You know, the first doctor had never heard of it, so they have to get the registrar, and the registrar didn't know about it, so he had to get the next person, and you'd wait and wait and wait and wait while they went up to the ladder, up the ladder to see yeah. the top person, who'd say, oh, that's really weird, we better do this test and this test and this test, like it was just... Yeah, just and you just feel like a guinea pig all of a sudden while they learn the process. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even yeah. the ones who do know about it or have heard about it uh, don't always know what to do about it. Yeah, know? well, I had weird um, symptoms as well. I used to get mm. waves that went from my hand up my body and around my head, and I'd just get these waves of this almost mm. distance. Um, and so they did a brain MRI with contrast to make yeah. sure there's nothing weird going on there and then I had to see a neurologist and have all sorts of other tests but I was really lucky because I worked there they all took me at my word so I never had yes. any say yeah. making this up which some people do yeah. get absolutely yeah. yeah so now seven years down the track the kids are older so it's a lot easier um, yeah. I still have problems like one of my sons has a manual car and mm-hmm. I can drive it but if I drive it for say 10 minutes my hand will ache the next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still yeah. sometimes need help to cut things up. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have any trouble with clotheslines now. I can do my own bra up and I can do my own hair. Um, Are you right or left handed? I'm right handed. I'm right handed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what I do, like, because I'm talking about it now, it's starting to hurt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Like, I lost a heap of confidence when it happened and just couldn't trust myself. And I'm slowly yeah. getting that back because I'm studying now and I've been able to do that and have some really good things happen. So, That's good. Yeah. I need Distraction that. Is, the, is the best thing, you know. Well, the psychologist yeah. said to me, fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One of the initial things that she said to me was, "Well, what if this is as bad as what is? What if this is as good as it gets?" And I said, "Oh no, no, I'm going to get better." She said, "But what if you don't? Like, mm. you got to think about that. You've got to make yeah. plans for your life." And it was really confronting, but it was actually really good because it made me think, "Well, shit, I've got to work out what I can do and what I can't do, and yep. what I'm prepared to live with." So now I've weaned off. Pretty much all the drugs. I only take half a dose of Lyrica and mm-hmm. um, antidepressants. And they recently yeah. increased them because I was a bit of a nutcase with more pain. But yeah, like with that, I can cope. I'm seeing a new pain specialist just after Easter because um, yeah. I just haven't seen one for such a long time that I'm sort of wondering yeah. it's probably time I did. Um, you never know that they might know something new, they might have something new to say or if you see a new doctor, um, yeah, they might have some more experiences or something. Well, um, that's what I figure. It's, you know, I can try. I still get yeah. regular massages when I can afford it because that makes a huge difference to me. Yes, yeah. The pain's in my hand but it 
like it'll center in my thumb or my wrist, it'll go right up my arm into my shoulder and sit behind my neck. Mm. And it's like, yeah. like it's cement in my back. So if I get regular massages, that makes a huge difference. Good. So I do as yeah. much as I can yeah. myself, but then, yeah, like sometimes you just need to pay the money and, and do things. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I carry Tiger Balm around because I find that really helps my hand. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm attached to my hot water yeah. bottle. I sleep with the hot water bottle in <laughs> summer, like so often. <laughs> yes, yeah. In February, I had um, back pain and leg pain and abdo pain, and I was just, I was just sick and sore. And the GP gave me pain patches, Norspan. And um, mm. that was terrific. That was so good. But I'd sleep constantly. And yeah, like, yeah. I work two days a week and I'm studying and I just couldn't not sleep. So I had to stop that. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes it's a matter of do you want the side effects or do you want the pain? It's like, you know, how much pain can I put up with so that I can work yeah. out what I need to yeah. do? It's a balance, you know, like you said, you, you've dropped some of your medication down to, to balance yourself out and, yeah. you know, they're the sort of things we need to do. You can't always take what the doctor recommends or gives. Yeah, that's you've right. You've got to listen to your own body as well. Yeah, Absolutely. that's right. I yeah. think the more you know, the better prepared you are. And yeah, like you'll see absolutely. people talk about toolboxes and you have all of these different things in your toolbox. So. Mm -hmm. If something doesn't work, you use something else. So whether it's mm -hmm. mindfulness or meditation or coloring in or watching a movie, yeah. all that stuff for distraction. And then yeah. with exercise, if you can't walk, maybe you can do yoga or Pilates or do some exercises at home. Stretching. Like there's things online. Yeah. There's, yeah, like there's an answer for every single thing. And if one thing doesn't work, yeah. try something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then what works today and... might not work tomorrow, but that's that's this mm -hmm. condition, and it just is. Yeah, really, yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. This has been great. You've been uh, very thank insightful. Thank you. Thank mm. you. It's the more we can help each other, the better. Okay, hello Rachel. Thank you very much Hi. for joining me. Um, now you have CRPS, and uh, how did you? Uh, what What was the injury that caused your CRPS? I was on a school trip about ten years ago up in London at Battersea Park. Uh, I'll picture the scene for you. Uh, it was some. I was on a uh, trip with a bunch of SEN kids with all different sort of uh, disabilities. Uh, mm -hmm. It started raining at the end of the day. I was carrying their present box because we met a load of stars like Frank Bruno and a few other people. Um, some of the uh, Atomic Kitten and different groups, bands, CBBs, Teletubbies, all sorts of like different characters, yep. Power Rangers. Uh, they used, because it was a charity event for kids with learning disabilities, the, uh, like the, the charity, um, in England used to give them like prizes and presents and they used to win stuff uh, yeah. it was pouring down with rain um, I was carrying their present box uh, there was like leaves slipped on the leaves landed on my backside leg went 45 degrees foot went 45 left foot went 45 degrees to the left um, I knew I'd done something but when you've got like 15 20 30 kids of SEN you just get up and dust yourself down and yeah, carry on yeah um, so I did that, carried on walking, um, sat on the bus and thought, oh, took my shoe off, which was like the worst thing to do, because it just went poof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the following day when I woke up, I went to A&E, because I didn't think it was that serious. Um, and they told me that actually it was like the worst thing I possibly could have done. But it was worse than a break, because I splatted oh. all the ligaments and muscles yeah. right down the back of my leg from my yep. knee so I've got like um when it, at the moment I'm in a complete flare up yeah. um although I'm standing up I've I'm sort of learning to walk and I'm, I'm yeah. kind of getting from a to a little bit 
Um, but I had MRI, Doppler test, um, CT scan, x-rays, um, about five nights in hospital where they tried to diagnose it. Yeah. Give yeah. me how many pills and potions. Um, uh -huh. I had doctors every like three hours once I was admitted for the five days of pulling it every five hours just to see how far it would go. Yeah. Pressing against it. I didn't know what it was. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it sort of got diagnosed that way, but it took like nine months for it to yeah. pop back in. So I was nine months off work the first time. Yeah, uh, it's hard, isn't then, it? Yeah, and that was like 10 years ago. And then I've had um, okay. a couple of sort of instances since where I've had a um, toe removed because my toenails just pop out over the last 10 years. Oh. They just fall out. They go oh, really? all like that brittleness. Yes, yeah. Just, I've, I've got like two toenails out of ten. Um, wow. I had an ingrained toenail that went septic, got removed twice during surgery, but it's my left toe, big toe, so it caused a CRPS flare up, and that was the last one I had four years ago. Yeah. Until this flare up, which was a work related injury. Okay. At a public school. Mm. Um, Facing a child with SEM, twisted my ankle, mm. running after him. Um, job description wasn't quite as it was on paper. Mm -hmm. um, child needs weren't quite there written. Yeah. It was um, social ADHD autism. Um, it turned into a physical job. So I was literally underneath him, chasing him, helping him out, um, mm. trying to gain social skills. And I twisted my ankle. The toast actually itself split open and went septic again. Oh. Um, caused the CRPS flare up, and then um, because I've been running around and doing dodgeball and stuff, not realising what I was doing because it was fine. Um, yeah. It the toe with the ankle injury, soft tissue damage injury, just flared it up, and I've been off work like nine months until last week when I. Uh, began working in this lovely techno city in Rayleigh, which is where I live. Um, cool. Like phone repair, laptop shop. Yep. Okay. So I only do like two and a half hours a day. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's good for your sanity though. Something. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean you need to get out of the house, you need to do something, you need to keep active, keep your mind on on things, yeah, you know. Yeah, because otherwise I sit there thinking about it. Yeah. It's just, uh, I've lost too many things that matter to me. Mm. Um, I am so passionate about SEN and kids, but I also like the technology. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm getting to kind of do that as well as like do the children's books. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been it's hard. Yeah. It's a big like, unconfidence boost, and so yeah. Yeah. It's not an easy, yeah. as you know. Yeah. No. No. Wow. So. So, um, so you've uh, you've had no positive treatments then? I've had havening therapy, which is like neuro linguistic programming, come physiotherapy. Um, right. Come a friend of mine over the last like ten years, a really close friend. Um, she does like a massage, and I had one on Saturday. Yeah. And if I could bot, I always say, if I could bottle her massage and rub it in as a cream. <laughs> It would be amazing because yeah. the chili cream don't work. I'm not allowed to use ice anymore. The no. tens machine, I don't even feel feel the sensations anymore. It used yeah. to be on like five or six, and it would hurt, yeah. and it would stimulate it and settle it. I'm on that eight or nine, and I don't even feel the the pain. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I've also got CRPS in my sort of sinuses here. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a perforated nose, and I've got it in my hand. Right. Uh, it does spread. Unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 hard. Mm. But yeah, with close family and friends, I get through it. But he's not where I want to be. No. I just want to be no. being around, doing what I want to do, and the hypersensitivity has got to be the worst. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. The pain, the cramping, the 
uh, someone sitting feeling like in your leg, feeling like they're stretching it, like stretch Armstrong. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, the tingling, the coldness, the hotness, the the burning sensation. It feels like actually I've sort of got a bit of the, um, I don't know whether I can, I'm not able to show you. Oh yeah, it's working like a paper right now. Uh, <laughs> Oh wow, can. that's quite swollen. You can see it, yeah, yeah, missing toenails and oh, yeah, was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I would like to kind of be at home with my foot up. Yeah, but I yes. My, but I won't let myself. Yeah. And no one else yeah. will let me because we all know kind of what problems it incurs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm finding now that because I'm putting a lot of weight on that foot. Um, and like close friends and family are trying to get me to walk without for the confidence. Oh, I'm going to have to shoot, sorry. I'll speak mm. to you later. No worries, thank you very much for doing this. This is great. Alright, cheers, mate. Alright, bye. Hello, Dan. Welcome and thank you for joining me. You're quite welcome. Glad to be here. Cool. So, um, tell us how your CRPS started. Uh, back in 2013, um, I had a knot on the top of my left shoulder and I went in and, uh, long story short, they did surgery on it and they left some pieces of bone they are missing and, uh, they damaged some nerves and basically about six months after that, I got diagnosed with CRPS okay. from the surgery. So... So they've left bits of bone float in there or something you say or yeah I got yeah I got a piece damage. of bone yeah two inches two inches long missing out of my shoulder um, and then I have another piece out on the clavicle I have a, a, a piece of 19 millimeters long that's not attached on either side so wow. yeah it's really hard to use the arm <laughs> yeah nasty nasty so yeah um, it's, it's, yeah. What are the, the symptoms that you've been getting from the CRPS? Um, the symptoms symptoms that I had um, right pretty pretty much right after the surgery, um, say maybe a week or two after the surgery at the longest, yeah. was the uh, my hand was uh, swollen rather rather big and um, puffy uh, discoloration. I had the the purplish red color. Um, my nail, my nails, fingernails on that hand grew extremely fast. I mean, I would actually have to cut them like twice a week on that hand. Um, and then, uh, you know, I went through a little bit of physical therapy. That didn't work. That made it worse. I did a couple of the gangular nerve blocks. Uh, one worked for about a week. The second one worked for a couple of days. And the doctor said we're going to do a, a trial for the nerve stimulator. So, And I went and got that done. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's given you some some relief, some benefit. Um, yeah, I'm getting great relief from the nerve stimulator. Honestly, um, awesome. the the but the last couple of months is when it really got better because they have a frequency they call it high frequency is what it's called over here. For yep. any pretty much any of the stimulators that are rechargeable batteries, you can get that frequency set on. And a couple of months ago, I had mine switched over to that setting, and um, I, my pain has been really under control. I've been off of pain meds for two months now. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. So, I mean, I've had a few bad days here lately. I've had a lot of muscle spasms in my arm for some reason the last couple of days. I, I don't know why or what's caused it. Maybe it's yeah. been a weather change that we've had or, you know, maybe it's just a flare-up it has. But it hasn't, you know, the pain's been under control so far. And that's good. So you, you're getting back into uh, to life again, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to trying to get back to where I need to be as close yeah. as I can, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, I don't believe it's remission. I believe it's just the stimulator um, doing what it's designed to do. The CRPS is still there; and it's never going to go away in my mind. But uh, if it can get rid of some of the pain, that's that's it for me, you know. That's yeah. the goal. So, what did the operation for the stimulator? Um, what was the procedure with that? 
Where, where, where um, is it they, exactly? What what are they putting it's, in? Um, I have Medtronic is the one I have. It's a it's a MRI compatible. Um, it's in the battery is located in the lower buttocks area, right below the waistline, and then the leads are actually I don't know if y'all can see, but up in the back of my neck, um, like uh, C C two C two C four, I believe. Yeah. Somewhere in that area is where the leads are implanted at, and okay. um, it put it, that's for the upper body. So I mean, the left side. So uh, they can plant them lower for your legs and stuff like that. So, yeah. And it, is it a simple procedure, or is it a, a risky, risky one going in the? Um, well, any to me, any surgery is risky. Okay, sure. but um, you're not you're not really put under. Uh, yeah. Um, they they they. They, just, they knock you out with, I mean, you know what's going on. You can hear them talk. You can answer questions. Uh, most doctors do it that way. I don't think all do, but 99% of them do. Because they want you awake in case something goes wrong or, you know, they want to be able to talk to you as well. Uh, yeah. It's in and out, same day, same day surgery uh, for almost all the stimulators. So, yeah, to me it's minor surgery. But anytime you're being cut, you know, cut on, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's dangerous. I mean, There's always I'm not going to say it's not but, yeah, it's, yeah, some people think it's it's worse, you know, that it's really bad because they do go up along your spinal column, but they're not really in your spinal column. They go up next to it, and then yeah. you know when they if they put it in your neck, then they go it goes up, and then they fish it through. But um, I mean, if you have a good doctor, I think things are okay with it. Yeah, it makes sense. That's, that's that's an important part is the good doctor, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing. Um, <laughs> is is there any uh, any final words you want to to leave to the viewers out there? Um, basically, just uh, you know, stay positive in life and um, try to keep as much stress out of your life as you can, and um, you know, don't give in, don't give up on trying things. Uh, keep keep looking for things that will work for you i mean they're out there there's things out there to help help us and a lot of people get frustrated when something doesn't work but you can't you got to keep going yeah you keep going because yeah. there's, there's a lot of things out there for crps now to, to help with the yeah. pain yeah and and we all react differently to treatments sure. as well so because sure. you hear one person you know it not working for them it doesn't mean it won't work for you either you know all right that's true. Yeah, we we are individuals, especially with CRPS. It's a, uh, you know, we all have that that same group of symptoms, but it it uh, we really do react individually. We get our our symptoms in different orders. You know, there's no yeah. sort of set stages to it or anything. So, hmm, that's true. That is true. All right. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, Dan. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. No problem.